it's mid-July thereabouts. So most of us are deep into the harvest portion of our spring crops, but there's still a lot of maintenance to do on the plants that we have growing that still have a long way to go. So in this video, I wanna show you how I prune the Brussels sprouts to get the sprouts to grow large. And then I will give you just a little update on some of the vegetable progress that we've got going on here. I think this is week 29. And as you can see, the kidney beans are all looking pretty plump. Now, if I was going to uh, can these beans, I would probably be picking them right around now. Maybe a little bit longer, but as you can see, like a lot of the pods, the beans are looking really plump in here. And this one's like starting to get to the dried stage. But because I'm looking for dry beans, I'm just going to uh, allow them go completely dry on the uh, plant and then harvest them and then store them that way. But as you can see, they're starting to fade now. Maybe could have used a little bit of fertilizer in here, but the, uh, the pods are all growing here. And even in here, you can see like these, this is like almost a dried pod. Not really, but it's pretty close. So we're getting to the point where we'll be harvesting these beans in a couple of weeks, probably. Sweet potato plants are now starting to uh, really put on some growth, finally. It took them a long time. We lost quite a few plants, actually. Well, they just actually haven't done anything. Well. So there's, you know, just a few in here. But they're still here, but they're not doing anything. But uh, others have really uh, taken off. So we may get some uh, sweet potatoes from this. Again, <laughs> they were crowded. Uh, the plants that were under here <laughs> were crowded by the uh, beans, so that might have had an effect on them. The onions haven't really put on any more size. And I think they're ready to be harvested now with the tops knocked over, a bunch of them starting to turn brown. I'm gonna let them go a little bit longer, but they're, uh, I just don't want them to uh, rot in the ground and start to split and stuff. So they're uh, gonna be coming out very soon. We do have, you know, a bunch of onions, not necessarily big onions. Yeah, I got some decent sized ones, but we've had just a massive rain for like a week or more where it's rained almost every day. So waiting for some dry weather to harvest them, but I just might have to pull them out of the ground. The sugar beets are looking good. I can get in here to show you. You can see the beets forming in there. So that's the really big one we've got. And I've actually found a couple of other good sized ones along here. There we go. That's looking pretty good. So, as I said, we've got a few good ones in here. A couple of, I guess, medium sized ones and a bunch of small ones, like in the small category. See this one laying down there? That's kind of small. Maybe here, kind of small. But we'll harvest them all. Getting some nice fruit on our Roma tomatoes. So they're really starting to uh, put out, which is good to see. And I'm guessing next month, August, they'll start uh, ripening up. So as I said, we got a lot of good growth on these uh, tomatoes and more flowers coming along too. So we should have more coming in the coming weeks. No fruit yet on the peppers, but we do have buds forming. We actually have some flowers here, but the plant itself is kind of wilting, as is this one. 
and I'm not sure if it's a combination of the heat and humidity we've had or something else. I think this is the one that just up and died. I'm pulling that one out. But yeah, I'm not sure uh, what occurred there that's causing these now to start to wilt, whether it's a disease of the plant or just uh, so much water from the rain that we've had. Finally, we're getting Brussels sprouts. And you can see them forming on the stem, the stems. So that's good to see. After my promising so many times that, no, they're coming, <laughs> they're finally forming. But we had a couple of issues. I didn't realize it at the time, but this guy's pretty stubby down here. This one, you know, let me pull back. Where all these others are up above the tops of the plants, this one, this one, and this one are all stubby little guys. They really didn't grow. And maybe it was just too close together again, <laughs> as with a lot of the problems I've had with my plants. But now that they are producing sprouts, now it's time to get rid of all this foliage. By pruning the, the leaves back, you give the plant the signal to direct all its energy into growing the sprouts and not growing the leaves. So all you do is you come in here. Hold on a second. There we go. So you come in and you just snip off right in front of the sprout. And you just work your way up the plant. Now I have a tomato cage around these plants, so it does make it a little bit more difficult to do that. Now, if you don't have a pair of uh, garden shears, you can just break the branch off. Either way is fine. So I'm gonna work my way around the uh, plant and I'll be back. So I've done these two uh, Brussels sprouts. And as you can see, they've been pruned all the way down. And let me get one more right there. There we go. And all these leaves will end up going to the chickens. Now I do know people cut off the tops of the Brussels sprouts at some point and eat them. Apparently it's like a big Brussels sprout. This one doesn't seem to have that sort of formation, but this one definitely does. It's got that little sprout head. And as you can see, there's a lot of white fly flying around. So pruning off these leaves also helps contain that white fly population. I'll end up doing the other uh, Brussels sprouts as well, but that's how you do it when the Brussels sprouts start forming. And here are all the Brussels sprouts pruned. So as I said, this one and this one in particular are minis. That one was uh, looks stunted. That one looks a little stunted too, compared to these over here. Now I did see even though this uh, one is stunted, it has a lot of sprouts, but they look like they're all blowing out here. So I'm not sure that this one or this plant will actually produce anything of value, but hopefully these others now that they've all got sprouts growing on them, they'll all produce some nice uh, sprouts later on. 
Does anyone know what this plant is? It's started just appearing and I was waiting for some uh, flower or something. I thought maybe it was chamomile when it first showed up, but I don't know what the heck this thing is. If anybody's got any idea as to what this plant is, let me know. I hate to cut it down if it's useful. Horseradish is looking fine. With the rain that we've had, they're really uh, not wilting now, that's for sure. Although from what I've read, horseradish actually likes it to be a little arid. They don't really want so much water. Chickens are fighting, but that's good. They're looking good. Cucumbers, we've I'd harvested another one. This one looks a little round. It's probably ready to pick right now though, actually. We've got another one here with a spotted lantern fly on top of it. And I think the spotted lantern flies actually are having an effect on the uh, cucumber plants. Just that because there are so many, I mean, it's still growing. And to a certain extent, the uh, plant is feeling the effects of the heat and the rain. But, I mean, just look at this. Where the hell are they? There we are. There are just so many uh, bugs on this plant that it can't help but, I guess, hurt the, uh, the plant in some fashion. Just noticed this on my fig tree. Got a lot of figs growing on here, but I've got an army of those bugs on the trunk. I don't think they'll actually hurt the trunk, but I am worried about the fruit and the rest of the uh, leaves and stuff. And again, there's just no defense against these. So the Brussels sprouts look pretty naked now, <laughs> and but it's a necessary uh, thing to do. And a lot of the vegetables are making some good progress in their growth. Some look pretty battered, but uh, I'm going to rectify that next year now that I have the community garden plot. I'll be able to plant more in more room rather than having to try and cram in as much as I can into the space that I had available to me. I think for the overall health of the plants, I think it will be best. Not that square foot gardening doesn't work, but perhaps I tried to cram a little too much into my garden space. So well, I'm looking forward to what I got going on in the garden this year. I am looking forward to what's coming next year too. And if you wanna see what we were doing in the garden last week, check out this video right here and then subscribe and hit that notification bell. And that way you'll be able to follow along in the progress on all of our vegetables as we try to grow a supermarket in our own backyard. Okay, thanks for watching.